Tonight on Access TV, it's Gotham Comedy Live. Get ready to laugh with Frank Spadone, Jenna Kingsley, Dan Natterman, Gina Yashere. This week's host, Bobby Lee. Gotham Comedy Live, all happening right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Bobby Lee. Yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. Hi, white people. How are you? Welcome, guys. I'm white. I just have jaundice. I'm going to run applause for my mustache. Come on, guys. <laughs> Asians know this is a fucking miracle. It took me nine years ago. This mustache? I look good. I look like a fat Manny Pacquiao. Uh, that's all muscle. That's one muscle. It's very soft, fucker. Touch it. Touch it. Come here. Come here. Come here. Touch it. Right here. Okay. <laughs> I trick you. <laughs> I sneaky. I sneaky like Pearl Harbor. Oh, too soon. You gotta wait a hundred years for a Pearl Harbor joke, Bobby. So uh, I masturbate a lot. Uh, I didn't masturbate for three weeks in a row. I almost fucking died, guys. Don't try that. It's not good for your body. Because when I finally did it, you know what came out? A marshmallow. <laughs> it hurts so fucking bad. <laughs> what is that, wood glue? Ah! <laughs> when I was in high school, I used to masturbate. I used to think to myself, when I get older, I won't be doing this. <laughs> I'm still doing it. <laughs> but I'm getting good. If it was a sport, I'd be pro. <laughs> I'd be sponsored and everything. My hand would say Gillette and Home Depot, you know. <laughs> There'll be a photo of me at the Hall of Fame. Just... <laughs> I try to see the environment when I'm asked because I believe in global warming. Yeah. Like when I finish, I don't clean up with a paper towel. That's bad for planet Earth. <laughs> no, I'll let it dry and flake away. <laughs> it reminds me of Christmas. <laughs> I call it dead baby dust. <laughs> oh no. We're sensitive, no. I watch porn, the worst kind of porn, Japanese porn, what the fuck? <laughs> it's so violent, right? Because the Japanese language, as aggressive as it is, I turned it on, it was like, Sungati! Sungatiya! The girl's crying. I don't know why. I don't know why. I know why you're a whore. The first hour of this video I saw, right, there was just like no sex at all. There was this girl wearing a private school uniform, Japanese girl. She's jumping up and down going, na na <laughs> For like an hour. She's like, na na I'm like, fuck yeah, na na ni. Like an hour later, swoon, <laughs> I'm still masturbating, what the fuck is going on? I hate cuddling, ladies. Cuddling is fucking boring. <laughs> this is every guy's face when they're cuddling. <laughs> the girls are always thinking, I feel safe. <laughs> I'm always thinking, I can't feel my arm. <laughs> Her hairs are in my mouth. <laughs> fucking sleep. You, know? you squeeze so they pass out. Fucking sleep. <laughs> I hate when women wake you up for no fucking reason. Bobby, wake up. What? I love you. <laughs> That's what you woke me up for? You mean I'm not on fire? <laughs> I had a girl wake me up like this. Was, Bobby, wake up. What? Can you get me some water? Wait a second. I didn't know you had muscular dystrophy. <laughs> you got legs. It's your own fucking water. I mean, who are you, Stephen Hawking? Even if I was gay and Stephen Hawking was gay and we're living together, I wouldn't get him water. He's a smart guy, he should prepare before he goes to bed. 
How scary would, would it be getting woken up by Stephen Hawking? That'd be scary, right? Bobby, wake up. Bobby, wake up. I'd have my own speak and spell machine just to fuck with him. What the fuck do you want? <laughs> Can you give me a glass of water? <laughs> fuck no. <laughs> and do like 50 Z's like I'm sleeping. <laughs> with my eyes open. <laughs> uh, my parents are Korean. Have you heard of us? Yeah. Immigrant parents, you know what they have? They have heart. You know what? They don't have a filter in their brain. Like whatever they think they say. This is my dad. Good morning, dad. You look ugly today. <laughs> Don't go outside. <laughs> Bob, you are fucking ugly. You know? He's like, you made me, motherfucker. I look just like you, you know? You're ugly too, you know? When I was in high school, I used to bring girls into my house. I would introduce them to my dad. My dad would tell them stories about me, like secrets. Hey, dad, this is Stephanie. When Bobby was a little kid, he ate the dog poop in the front lawn. I said, hey, don't eat that. He said, I only had one piece. You know? <laughs> Isn't that funny? You know? Nice to meet you, Stephanie. <laughs> he still does it today. Hey, Dad, this is my girlfriend, Kathy. When we lived in Minnesota, Bobby was molested by a retarded guy. <laughs> I said, how did he get molested by a retard? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe Bobby's retarded too, you know. <laughs> he has a big head for his body, you know. He has a Down syndrome face. <laughs> he got three C's on his report card for Asian. That's retarded. <laughs> I was on that show, The League, first season, right? They wrote me a part. They go, we wrote you a part. I go, what is it? They go, Chinese guy with Down syndrome. <laughs> so I show up to makeup. I go, what are you guys gonna do? Pr prosthetics under my eyes? They're like, no, you're fine. <laughs> I go, what am I gonna wear? You're gonna wear what you're wearing. This is Down syndrome clothing? <laughs> I was on the wrestling team in high school. I was fucking awful. <laughs> Thank you, lady. What the fuck? <laughs> Go fuck yourself, all right? You know what? I'm gonna fuck you after the show. I swear to God. <laughs> With my yellow monster. Immigrants, I used to, do, I used to like dread my dad coming to the meeting. Immigrants, they cheer differently than white folk. This is how white folk cheer. Come on, Billy, hustle. I'm proud of you, buddy. This is how immigrants cheer. Kill him! Break everything in his face. Bobby, don't let him live, you know. That's a rusty match, not a homicide. All right, this joke uh, is for me. This next joke, okay? I'm tired of Asian chicks that only date white dudes. What the fuck? <laughs> Those girls are some whiter than white chicks. Bobby, this is my boyfriend, Michael. That's your boyfriend and you're his fetish. Congratulations. <laughs> you're like a foot, you know? <laughs> I had an Asian chick say, I prefer white guys over Asian guys because white guys have bigger dicks, which is fucking rude. <laughs> all right? It's true, but rude, all right? <laughs> I'm small, but I'm quick. Da, 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 you know? <laughs> I'm like a sewing machine. Da, 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 you know? <laughs> it's very shallow that she said that. That's like if I said. I prefer white chicks over Asian chicks because white chicks have pink vaginas, not dark purple ones. <laughs> Asian chicks have dark purple vaginas. <laughs> if Barney had a vagina, that's what it would look like. <laughs> if it was a jacket, Prince would wear it. <laughs> that's why black guys love Asian girls. They think this grape drink down there. <laughs> Fuck you, that's funny. Come on, clap, guys, it's a show! We're at a show, guys! We're at a show. Thank you, that's been my portion of the show. Clap your hands, guys. Come on, guys, clap your hands. Clap your fucking hands. You touched my dick, clap your hands. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, Frank Spadone is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. Yeah! Yes, sir! Yeah. You guys having fun, guys, huh? Yeah. This next comic is, uh, 
good looking but kind of fat. Um, he just did the Just for Laughs, uh, uh, and uh, he is very funny. Mr. Frank Spamone. Come on, everybody. Frank Spamone! Frank Spamone! What's, uh, what's happening in New York? Yeah, yeah it's, great. it's great to be here. Oh, holy shit, I'm, uh, man, I, I'm, I'm a little tired. If I look a little tired, I'm sorry. I got two kids at home. Yeah, I, I, I did it. M not myself, she was there, my wife. Uh, two kids, holy shit, I just wanna sleep. They don't sleep. Holy shit. I used to use this phrase before I had kids. I slept like a baby last night. Yeah, I don't fucking use it anymore. Yeah, because I know what a baby sleeps like, right? Yeah, and I hate it when my friends say it to me, right? It's like, I slept like a baby last night. I'm like, oh, really? What happened? Just you shit yourself a couple times last night? <laughs> Had to change your pajama because you soaked through on one of them, finally fell asleep, but woke yourself up because you farted really loud and started yourself, and then you couldn't go back to sleep because you were punching yourself in the head, and you didn't know that it was you that was doing it. Is that how you slept? <laughs> or did you sleep like somebody who's got no kids? <laughs> Holy shit, oh, thank you. Some parents out there, thank you. <laughs> Holy shit, my God. And man, I feel bad for my wife. It's two, the hormones uh, get the best. You ladies, I feel bad for you because the, the you're prisoners of your hormones. Holy shit, and it's, you guys, we gotta cut them some slack, especially when they get pregnant. My wife, holy shit, like the last trimester, I think it's what it is, her hormones were going crazy. She had this like bionic sense of smell. Have any of you women gone through this? Yeah, some of you. I couldn't take her anywhere. Right? Try to take her out, break up the monotony of whatever. <laughs> right? so I take her out. No, I couldn't take her out. Every time she went, I was like, oh my God, Jesus Christ. Oh my God, it's making, me, it's making me nauseous. I'm gonna throw up. Oh my God, some man smoking some weird cigar over there. Oh my God, this lady's got some floral perfume. It's giving me a fucking headache. Oh my God, some man's grinding coffee beans in Colombia. Do you smell that? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> they should have pregnant women working at the airports, sniffing the bags. <laughs> they can tell you what's in the bag without even opening it. You know what I mean? So there's feta cheese in here, there's narcotics, there's a baby elephant, whatever the fuck they're smuggling. I don't know. I mean, she asked me once, she asked me once when she was pregnant, she's like, Frank, did you fart? I'm like, no. Haha, <laughs> you will. Holy shit. <laughs> it's still in my ass. Jesus Christ. It's tough. I'm lucky. I got, uh, my parents are still around. My mom, my little Italian mother, um, takes, helps take care of my kids. So she's watching my oldest son, Adrian, and, uh, and uh, I brought him home. He was swearing, right, a lot. And so, I didn't care. I didn't care, right? I, I, but uh, I called my mom to see, you know, what happened. Right? So I called my mom. Hey, Ma, uh, anything happened? Uh, you know, uh, Adrian uh, swearing a little bit. Maybe did something slip? Or maybe you thought something was funny? You know, my mom right away, she gets all pissed off. She's like, no, no, no. I not teach my grandson the bad words. So why you call me like this? Insult me in this way, huh? How, why do you think it's me? I go, why do I think it's you? Because he's running around the house saying, hey, daddy, this toy, it's a fucking bullshit. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> I think the accent gave it away, Ma, you know, a little bit. <laughs> She's like, no fucking bring him no more. I don't give a shit. She gets like, okay. Relax. Relax a little bit. What is nice. Uh, so, yeah, I got kids. Um, I'm married. Uh, I got a wife. Um, I, yeah, I had to uh, get married. Italians, that's what they want out of their kids. Shit, they, they bug you all. When are you gonna get married, Frank? It's about the time to get married. I'm 14, I can take it easy a little bit. <laughs> but, yeah. but then my mom would give me advice about women, not the most positive. Yeah, it's my favorite advice. My little Italian mother would give me about women. Like, Frank, watch out, huh? Keep your eye open. The women of today, it's not like when I was young. No, 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 the women of today, it's, today it's different. The women of today is like olive oil. I'm like, olive oil? What are you talking about? Yeah, like olive oil. They say they're virgin. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, they've been pressed more than one time, you know? <laughs> Uh, 
But, uh, yeah, so I got married with that advice. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. She's, uh, she's nice, um, my wife. Um, she looked controlling. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not her fault. <laughs> it's not her fault. Uh, naturally, uh, you women could be a little bit, don't get mad at me. I see some of you already like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Frank, it's naturally, you're, it could be, I know what happened, I got three older sisters, it's not your fault, you're conditioned. What happens when you're young, right, you play with dolls. So you're used to controlling the scenarios and the situations all the time, and then as you get older, us guys, we just replace your dolls, that's all that happens. It starts right away when you start living with each other, that's when you notice it, right? That's what I mean, my wife, yeah, it's like, come on, Frank, let's get going, we're going to the restaurant, oh, no, no, and I'm not going out with you just like that, no, put this shirt on, put these pants on, put these shoes on, oh my God, now you look good for me, I can be seen with you, oh my God, here we are, isn't it fantastic, here we're at the restaurant, I picked it out, isn't it great? Yeah, you never would have picked a place like this, okay, isn't it great? Yeah, you sit here, I sit here, so I can see everything, okay, yeah, just two drinks, okay? Don't fucking embarrass me tonight, okay? Oh my God. Oh my God, this is gonna be amazing. Oh my God, this is gonna be fun. Oh my God, here's the waiter. You're gonna start with these as our appetizers. I'm gonna order this one as my main course. I'm also gonna order this one as my main course, whichever one I like the least. My husband's gonna eat that one. Ain't that right? Sweetheart, okay, yeah, pay the guy, tip him, not too much. We're on a budget, let's get going. We're going to the movies. Okay, you drive, yeah, get in the car. Yeah, okay, go down this street. Put your seatbelt on, Jesus Christ. I don't want nothing to happen to you. I love you so much. Okay, go down this street. Yeah, you're gonna go. Yeah, you're gonna go down, you're gonna make a left. At those, see those lights right there? Yeah, where this, the red car is coming out, you're gonna make a left. Yeah, I said, right there, this street. I said, make a fucking left at this street, Jesus Christ. What's about? It's red, it's green, it's yellow. Oh my God, oh, it's holy shit, slow down. What are you trying to kill us? Hurry up, we're gonna be late. It's gonna be your fault. Oh my God, there's a pedestrian. Watch out for the pedestrian. You're trying to run too close. Watch out, holy shit, watch out. There's pick a lane, pick a lane, Jesus Christ, pick a lane. I can feel the lines, I can feel the lines under my ass. Holy shit, watch out. Okay, we're here, park the car. Shit, could you park a little further now? I gotta walk all the way. Over here. Come on, let's get going. Why, come on, don't watch. Let's, it's gonna start. Why are you slouching? Don't slouch. None of my friends, husbands, they don't slouch. I want a man that's from. Stick your chest out. Just like this. Who did your hair? Your hair looks like shit. Don't go back to that guy. What do you fucking count Dracula with the pointy shit like that? And your toenails are too long. Don't you cut them with your pubic hairs are out of control? Don't laugh. Ha ha ha. It's embarrassing. Don't sneeze. You're spreading germs. Holy shit. Stop doing this. Don't fart in public. I don't like that. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> and then one day she just blurts out, what happened to the guy I met eight years ago? <laughs> I changed. <laughs> but I'm lucky, right? <laughs> yeah, she, I met my soulmate. <laughs> yeah. Some of my friends not so lucky like me. It's, uh, <laughs> they're trying, they're trying. They're, they're doing the online dating. That's the, that's the new, that's the thing now. That's how people meet now, apparently. <laughs> how do you get to know somebody online? I live with my life, with, with my wife. My life, she's my life. She's my wife. My wife is my life. She's, <laughs> she's, <laughs> we're still lear learning shit from each other. You know what I'm saying? I mean, how do you get to know? I mean, and my friend was doing it and I was there and he's, you know, you get the profile and then they hook you up with people and then you gotta ask like questions, you know, like irrelevant, like, come on, I'm, I'm married. You know, I'm like, what's your favorite color? Blue, oh my God, mine's purple. That's in the same family of hues. What's your favorite <laughs> the food, you know? Do you like long walks on the beach and picnics in the sand and cotton candy up your ass like this means nothing? <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, shit, I mean, shit, I mean, if I, if I was single again and I had to ask the question, I mean, I know what questions I'd be asking, you know? <laughs> yeah, hi, yeah, so uh, mm -mm. what temperature do you like the thermostat at? Yeah, do you sleep on your side of the bed or do you sleep on an angle and jam your toes up my ass? <laughs> Are you always right? I mean, that one I really need to know. But, uh... Hey, you guys have been a great crowd. Thank you very much. Thank you. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Jenna Kingsley is taking the stage when we return.
best comic coming to the stage is her television debut, huh? Come on, right? Huh? <laughs> Round of applause for Jenna Kingsley. Come on! excited to be live from New York City tonight. This is my hometown. I was born and raised here. I'm single. It's my, it's my mom's dream that I would be announcing it on live television in the event someone may know someone for me. She loves to set me up. The other day I heard her talking to some strangers and she's like, this is my daughter. She's divorced, if you know anyone. I look over, she's showing them pictures of me on her iPhone. I was like, why are you showing them my picture? I'm sitting right here. She's like, this is a very beautiful picture of you. What is it, airbrush? Then I was pissed because she basically told me I was ugly in real life. I love my mom, she's totally neurotic. The other day she was driving me somewhere, I was texting in the car. She's like, do not text in the car, that is so dangerous. I'm like, that's only if you're driving. She's like, no, it's still dangerous. She also has this intense fear of the HOV lane, like we're never gonna get out. I was driving her somewhere, she's like, maybe we should get out now. I was like, why, we're at exit 30, we're going to 70. She's like, how do you know there's gonna be another exit? I'm like, cause it's an hour. She's like, let's just play it safe. I'm like, you know, it's just a line and we can cross it at any time. She's like, that's illegal, Jenna. I'm a mom, I have a nine-year-old. Thank you. Thank you. I love when I tell people I have a nine-year-old and they're like, how did you give birth to a nine-year-old? I'm like, I didn't. I gave birth to a newborn nine years ago and then he grew. <laughs> There's nothing like being a parent to make you feel old because kids love to tell you that you are. <laughs> the other day we were in a rush, my son lost his toothbrush and I was like, just put some toothpaste on your finger and go like this. He was like, is this what you did when you were little before they had toothbrushes? <laughs> I was like, yeah, right after grandma would send me to the well on 3rd Avenue next to Radio Shack for water. <laughs> I'm dating, it's where happiness goes to die. <laughs> the other day a guy told me his penis could break me in half. <laughs> I was like, I don't think I want that. Unless, of course, it's a magic trick, then that could be fun. <laughs> but dating is hard because we want to maintain impossible things like standards and self-respect. <laughs> if a guy does something we don't like, we're like, I don't know who you think you are, but you are not gonna get away with that shit. <laughs> then we're like, call me later, okay? <laughs> what time, what time? I'm not proud, I mean, I'm a little proud because he ended up calling. I went out with a brain surgeon once. First of all, that's a real job. I was like... <laughs> the entire time I was looking at him and I was like, every date, every fight we ever have is gonna end with, no, it actually is brain surgery. <laughs> I was like, I can't have that, it's over. I'll never win. I'm a Jew, I dated an Arab once, I loved it. It was so controversial. <laughs> It was like in the 80s when people would adopt crack babies. I was like, this is my Arab. I was so proud. <laughs> Got a little stressful after a while. He started to leave things in my apartment. He once left a backpack in my living room. <laughs> I was like, is this a see something, say something situation? I, I don't know. I dated a Puerto Rican once. I love Puerto Ricans. Here's why. When I'm walking down a busy city street and there's a tree with a three by three patch of grass, I see a place for my dog to go to the bathroom. They see a banquet hall. They will throw a hibachi grill on that patch of grass. 
invite 200 of their closest friends and have the sickest party ever. I have three people come to my house for dinner, six chairs, and I'm like, how the fuck am I gonna pull this off? They don't even need that patch of grass. There could be grass growing from a crack in the sidewalk on 95th and Lexington. And they're like, we can have our party here. <laughs> Nobody appreciates urban grass more than the Puerto Ricans. <laughs> they are the most ecologically friendly nationality in this city. <laughs> Dating. Guys, you don't know this, but we as women know more about your ex-girlfriends than you do. <laughs> right now, all the guys are like, what? And the girls are like, totally. <laughs> You're like, I don't know what happened to my ex. Last I heard, she moved to Chicago. We're like, no. She lives three blocks away. She just bought a Labradoodle. But we don't say it. We just think it. <laughs> I'm a writer, which means I masturbate all day long. That's what I do. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't even know if it's medically safe what I do to myself. I'm not a doctor. I mean, I'm Jewish, but I'm not a doctor. <laughs> I just play one on WebMD. And I have this thing, I'm always like, oh, people can see me, they're watching. So I stopped doing it on the subway. <laughs> okay. And I come up with like new tricks. I, I use my phone to vibrator by putting it on vibrate and calling it from a landline over and over again. <laughs> But I don't have a landline, so I had to use my neighbors. <laughs> um, what else can I tell you? Uh, oh, I know. I'm obsessed with CVS. It's the laziest place on earth. It's like the post office of drugstores. Just when I thought they couldn't get lazier, they put in self-checkout kiosks, so not all the people that didn't want to check you out before are getting paid to watch you check yourself out. <laughs> There's always like one, like, key, there, there's always a kiosk in the front of the store, and I always have to help the old lady, and I'm like, is there um, an employee discount? Because I officially work here, I do. <laughs> I do. There's always a register in the front of the store that is used for nothing, and the woman's like, is anyone here to pick up film that's being developed? <laughs> I'm like, not since 1998. <laughs> and then we hate her, because we think she's mocking us. Um, I also am obsessed with keychains at gas station bathrooms. They're enormous. Are people stealing these keys in droves? Like, what? The other day I went to the bathroom at a gas station, I asked the guy for the key, and he just looked at me and kicked a rolling office chair at me. I was like, no, I don't want a job, I want the key. He's like, it's attached. I was like, oh. So I start dragging the chair behind me through the parking lot doing the walk of shame, like I'm going to use a dirty bathroom and I want all of you to know it, including that part of the highway. <laughs> it's hitting my ankles, so I decide to sit on it and like ride it to the bathroom. <laughs> then when I get to the bathroom, I don't want to leave the chair outside because I'm responsible for the cup of the key and I don't want it stolen on my time. So I bring it in the bathroom with me. There's no room, so I decide to sit on it while I wash my hands. I'm like, this is kind of nice. I want this for my bathroom. So I stole it. I stole the chair <laughs> and the key. I love that key. And I love you guys. I'm Jenna Kingsley. Thank you. <laughs> Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, Dan Natterman is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs right now. Yeah. You guys having fun? Come on, yeah! This next comic coming to the stage has been on Letterman, and he's got very moist lips. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Dan Natterman. Come on, everybody! Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. So uh, I'm, I'm not married, and I've never been married. 
And I'll tell you why that is. Because I talk to married people all the time. And you know what I'm not hearing? Enthusiasm, all right? <laughs> Ain't nobody selling this marriage shit. You wouldn't buy any other product if people talked about it the way people talk about being married. <laughs> like if you went to buy a car and the salesman was like, well, this car, uh, it's not easy. It's not easy, you know? It takes, uh, <laughs> takes, uh, you really gotta work at it. It takes a lot of work. And there'll be good days and bad days with this car. But don't give up. You wouldn't buy that car. I ask, I ask married people all the time, how do you like being married? And at best, you know what I hear? So far, so good. That's as, that's as excited as they get. If I ask people, how do you like Breaking Bad? They're like, dude, holy shit. I have used uh, internet dating. Uh, Match.com, you gotta be careful because people lie to you on the internet. And now what's the number one most common lie on the internet? People lie about their age on the internet, right? And then they'll put up like an old picture from like 1982. <laughs> so they look young in the picture and then you meet them and they're 78 years old, okay? <laughs> That's why I tell women I meet online, look, send me a picture of you holding today's paper, okay? <laughs> or, Or, or at least an iPod, you know, something, <laughs> there's an iPod and you got an iPod in there, it can't be older than 10 years old. But w one picture I saw on the internet, the Berlin Wall was in the background <laughs> and it was under construction. So I knew that, <laughs> that that's an older picture. I got a call, New York University called me up the other day looking for money. Anybody ever get a call from where they went to college asking for more money? They call me up, they're like, what's up? We need more money. I was like, what'd you do with the money I gave you? I already paid you people 20 years ago. Who the hell does business like that? You don't go to a restaurant and get a call years later saying, yeah, we're redoing the kitchen. Can you kick in a few bucks? Because we're, we're calling all the chicken Parmesan alumni. So be a part, be a part of this exciting and People like to clap. Because it was a rip-off in the first place. It was a rip-off in the first, I studied a bunch of shit I don't use. Forget the fact I never got laid there, all right? <laughs> That's bad enough. But I studied a bunch of, I took liberal arts, which is just, that shit you're not gonna, they made me take a foreign language. So I took three semesters of Italian. We live in America, we don't need to speak a foreign language here. I took three semesters of Italian only because they made me and it don't come in handy for it. The only thing it's good for is say I take a girl to like an Italian restaurant, I can impress her by talking to the waiter in Italian. Now I can't say much, but I can say like, what's the soup of the day? Or uh, if she orders anything over 20 bucks, tell her you're out of it. Something like that's all I know how to say. In it. Pretty much all I know how to say in Italian. <laughs> Plus English is the best language in the world. I don't know if you knew that, sir, but we got, cause English has, yeah, because English has words for shit they don't even have in other languages like butterface, right? All right, now everybody knows what that means. If you don't know what that means, that's a woman where everything is hot, butterface, all right? <laughs> everything is hot, butterface. And I don't believe there's a word for that in any other, I took three semesters of Italian and I know there's no word for butterface in Italian. If you wanna say butterface in Italian, it takes a whole sentence. You gotta say il corpo magnifico. La faccia disgustosa. <laughs> yes. Necessario paper bag <laughs> Or doggy style -o. <laughs> What's going on with this Obama health plan? They, everybody's complaining. I think they might have canceled my insurance, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't been to the doctor anyway in a long time because I don't trust them because, because of these commercials you see on TV for prescription medication. Apparently we're supposed to tell our doctors what to prescribe for us. Like I saw the commercial for Prevacid, and then at the end of the commercial, you know what it says? It says, ask your doctor about Prevacid. <laughs> but I'm thinking, shouldn't your doctor know about Prevacid? How's that my job? <laughs> what, do you walk into your doctor's office? Yeah, there's nothing we can do for you. Oh, what about Prevacid? <laughs> well, 
Oh, you know you're right? That's a good point. Let me write your prescription. Now, uh, now how many milligrams is good that it's saying in the commercial? Because I, I didn't see the commercial, so it's all up to you. Thanksgiving time is coming up. That means we're gonna spend time with our families, right? Yeah. Which is very stressful for many of us because families are very stressful. I know mine is. You know, here's the funny thing about family. No matter how weird your family is, when you're a little kid, you don't even know your family is weird. Because <laughs> all you know when you're little, all you know is your family. So you're thinking, well, I guess that's how every family is. <laughs> that's all I know. Like, I remember one time when I was little, I was at my friend Mike's house for dinner, right? And in the middle of dinner, I turned to him and I said, hey, Mike, these potatoes are undercooked. Your mother's in for a beating later, huh? <laughs> you know, I figured, I figured they were just like us. And then, uh... Then Mike spills his soda. I'm like, run! This could get ugly. My father, he never talked to me about sex. Well, one time, he, the only time my father talked to me about sex, before I went off to college. He sat me down, he's like, Dan, you're going off to college. You're gonna be living on your own for the first time in a dorm surrounded by beautiful women. So I got you something from the drugstore. So I'm like, oh, I already have condoms. He's like, no, antidepressants, all right? <laughs> There's gonna be a lot, of, a lot of hot chicks here. You ain't fucking any of them. And, uh, and he, uh, he, he, he nailed it, but it's gotten better since then. I, although living in New York is not easy, because you women in, the, women in New York City are not easy, okay? And I mean, a lot of guys from out of town, they come to New York, they think they're gonna get laid while they're here, and maybe they will but it's not that simple because women in New York are not easy. I mean, I meet guys all the time. They come to me for advice. They're like, Dan, you live in New York. Now, well, uh, what's a good bar we could go to get some action? I'm like, oh, you want a bar where well, you're gonna get some action. All right, you go to the end of the block, right? And then you turn gay and it's right there, okay? You can't miss it. Right, the man... Yeah, the... Right, the manhole on Bleecker Street. The manhole, that's a real gay bar, you know, the manhole, sir. Everything... I don't know if you've been out that way, but um, anyway, yeah, I've been I've been uh, traveling, and uh, where was I? Canada, recent Canadian people in the in the house tonight. Are you? Where are you, where are you from? Toronto. Everybody's talking about you guys because your mayor has been smoking crack and talking about eating pussy on television. And uh, at. Well, he has, and that's the only reason we know who the guy is. Because we don't know any other Canadian politicians. I was talking to a Canadian girl. She, she was talking, she mentioned this dude, Stephen Harper, who apparently is an important man in your country. I said, who the hell is Stephen Harper? She got offended. She said, whoa, you don't know who the Prime Minister of Canada is? I said, I'll do you one better. I didn't know Canada had a Prime Minister. What do you think of that? <laughs> I said, you... I said, you could have told me he was the CEO of Canada. I don't know. Nobody knows who your prime minister is. No offense, but even with multiple choice, we don't know. You, a you ask any American, who's the prime minister of Canada? A, Stephen Harper. B, Vancouver. Uh, C, Celine Dion's fat husband. That'll be the number one answer. Thank you so much, everybody. That's, thank you very much. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Gina Yashere is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. Man, we're having so much fun, yeah. Guys, the next comic, I didn't think she liked me because we had a little falling out, but we, we love each other now, right? Yeah, I love you, okay? She's been on Leno, all right? Gina Yashare, come on, everybody! Gina Yashare. Yay! What's happening in New York City? It's good to be here. Good to be here. I'll let you guys get used to the way I speak. Yes, I really do speak like this. There are black people in England. Yes, there are. <laughs> Yay! Did you know that, sir? Did you know? 
We are everywhere. <laughs> Obviously, black people aren't indigenous to England. My mother is from Nigeria, West Africa. That's right, my mother left Nigeria for England. What the hell was she thinking, people? <laughs> she had the pick of the globe. She could have gone anywhere in the world. I imagine my mother in Nigeria with all her maps spread out before her. Hmm. Where shall I go? Where shall I go? <laughs> you know what? I am fed up with this sunshine. Uh, <laughs> I want to go somewhere with a lot of drizzle <laughs> and subtle racism. Yes, that's what I want, subtle. <laughs> Because the Brits are the best at racism. That's right, they're the best. You don't even know you're being discriminated against. That's how good they are. <laughs> they are fucking ninja racists. That's what they are. <laughs> and that's why I prefer good old American racism. <laughs> yes! Yes, Americans, I like it. You know where you stand with American racism. You guys have made movies to let me know where I'm welcome and where I'm not. <laughs> For instance, I know I'm never going to fucking Mississippi. It's beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. Now, I'm not saying we don't have our rednecks in England. Yes, we do. I used to work as an engineer. I worked on building sites, and that's where they congregate. <laughs> and I had a guy, this was an actual conversation that took place at work one day. Guy comes up to me at work, and he's like that. Gina! <laughs> <laughs> that's how the rednecks laugh in England. <laughs> Gina, you know what your name spells backwards? A nig. <laughs> And I was like, I was like, wow, he, uh, he really thought about that shit. <laughs> yeah, so, wow. <laughs> and then I went home to my mother. I was like, mother, you have ruined my life. <laughs> you know what, my name spells backwards. <laughs> and my mother tried to console me. She was like that, you go back there and you tell that bastard your full name is Regina. And I'm like that. <laughs> A nig uh. No, a nig uh. Yeah. <laughs> so, the moral of the story, black people, when you're naming your kids, check out all the fucking anagrams and shit. <laughs> But it's good to be here in America. America! Fuck yeah! <laughs> that's, how you get, that's how you guys sound to me. We're Americans, man. Fucking Americans. We're fucking Americans, man. Amer I don't know why I'm doing this with my leg. It just feels good. America! Fucking America. I've been learning from you people. I've been watching you. I've been learning your culture. I've learned a lot about you. What have I learned since I've moved to America? Uh, oh, you guys have got some of the best kidnappers in the world. <laughs> that guy that kept those women in a basement in their own neighborhood for 10 years? I'm still trying to work out whether that's genius or laziness. Uh, <laughs> You know the dude I'm talking about, right? The dude in Cleveland. I mean, to be honest, I've been to Cleveland and I would have preferred the basement. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Cleveland's shit. He kept them in the basement in their own neighborhood, right, for that long. I mean, there was an interview with one of the women that got out and she was talking about how from the basement she could hear when her family were barbecuing. And I was like, my God, that was close. And then I was like, hold on a minute. This woman was missing. And her family <laughs> were barbecuing. <laughs> now, 
I'm not from America. <laughs> so I do not know your missing family member etiquette. <laughs> How long is it before you start barbecuing again? <laughs> it's a difficult question. It's like Amanda is missing, we love her and we want her home. But these ribs ain't gonna cook themselves. <laughs> America! <laughs> I like America, what else do I learn? I've never seen so many, many pharmaceutical products for sale before. You, either you guys are really sick or they're trying to convince you guys that you're really sick. <laughs> These pharmaceutical gummies, they're making up illnesses. What the fuck is restless leg syndrome? <laughs> that shit does not exist. <laughs> there was no restless leg syndrome a hundred years ago. Nobody in Game of Thrones has restless leg syndrome. <laughs> right? I have not, I'm yet to see that scene. We will go, we will fight King Joffrey. We will go to war. Oh, shit, fuck. <laughs> shit. Shit. I can't get on the horse. I can't get on the horse. This is. ADHD did not exist 50 years ago. 50 years ago, you were just a crazy little fucker. That's what you were. <laughs> 50 years ago, ADHD was cured by a swift kick to the face. Shut the fuck up, sit down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now they've got all these commercials that come on in the middle of the night. Those commercials are like, do you find that your eyes close at night? <laughs> then you need oxymoxiloxiloxiloxiloxiloxygen. Side effects may include headaches, dizziness, nausea, menstruation in men, and death. <laughs> America! Your music industry is of great interest to me. Everybody was getting on a while back about Miley Cyrus and the whole VMA debacle. I don't know what the big deal was, okay? Because this is, this is the music industry that we've created where women feel they've got to be like overtly sexual to be successful. In my opinion, Miley Cyrus was simply doing her job as a female artist. Look at all the other female artists. Look at Rihanna. Have you seen Rihanna's latest video? She's got this song out called Pour It Up, Pour It Up, and this is her half naked with a bunch of strippers on poles behind her, just doing this. <laughs> pour it up, pour it up. <laughs> pour it up. Uh, she sounds a bit retarded. Pour it up, pour it up. <laughs> da -la, da -la, bills, da -la. This is the whole video. You don't even have to go on YouTube. This is it. <laughs> da -la, da -la, bills, da In fact, I think I'm doing it sexier than Rihanna. Would you buy this, sir? Pour it up, pour it up. <laughs> da -la, da -la, bills, da <laughs> The women are going to be sexy. That's the industry. Men, not so much. Look at the men in the music industry. Uh, Lil Wayne looks like somebody scribbled all over a scarecrow. <laughs> How does he get laid? That's like fucking the predator. <laughs> and is it me or does CeeLo look like a midget who grew? Um, <laughs> Come on, I'm not the only person that's looked at CeeLo and gone, wow, that's a fucking big midget. How did they do that? That's amazing. I, I used to watch The Voice every week just to see if he could reach that button. Just... <laughs> I don't like the rap music. All the rap music is just cursing. I don't like it. I don't like them. I think, I think most rap music is shit nowadays. There's no poetry in it anymore. This is just cursing. This is all I hear when I hear rap. Motherfucker hole, bitch, motherfucker hole. Fuck you, bitch, motherfucker, bitch hole. Suck my dick, bitch, motherfucker hole. I got a big fat fuck dick, 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 dick. Suck my dick, suck my dick, bitch, motherfucker hole. Fuck you, motherfucker, bitch, motherfucker. Fuck you, motherfucker, bitch, motherfucker. Dick, dick, fuck you, bitch. Fuck you, dick, dick, motherfucker. What? Nigga, 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 bitch. Nigga, 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 bitch. Nigga, ho, nigga, 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 bitch. Fuck you, nigga, bitch, ho, bitch, ho. Fuck you, diamonds. Bitch, ho, fuck you, ho. 
I'm Jeannie Ashray. Thank you. Thank you. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs right now. All right, guys, uh, do you guys have fun, huh? Yeah. They said that I had uh, 40 seconds to kill, so I'm just gonna get naked. Is that cool, guys?